Good afternoon, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Matthew update. 12.45 Eastern Time that I am recording this. Let's take a look at the visible satellite imagery. There is the well-defined eye clearing out after getting a little bit muddled overnight. And look at that, it has dived off to the south and west again in recent hours. And as I'm going to show you on the GFS, that was actually forecast by the GFS in the short term. Pretty remarkable. In fact, the GFS still rendering, at least on the INCEPT server, uh, National Centers for Environmental Prediction, as I am putting this together. So, uh, so far, this is spot on in the short term. Otherwise, look at the overall structure. Uh, there is a little bit of wind shear trying to impact this. And you can see that over here. See some of these higher clouds right there. Watch that as it blows from west to east. That's indicative of stronger winds coming in this way. But I got to tell you, the central core around this thing, it's like it's getting protected uh, by uh, troops along the outside perimeter, so to speak. If the core is the general, then all of the troops surrounding that general are on the outside holding the line against the shear for now. And we're going to see this wax and wane uh, over the next few days. And fluctuations in intensity is what we call it. Uh, are to be expected. So it may bounce back up to Category 5. It could stay you know, in the Category 4 range for a, a bit. Uh, water temperatures do increase up in this region, especially the upper ocean heat content. So it you know, may have a chance to strengthen a little bit more as it approaches Jamaica here and Haiti over here. A couple things to look at that could be uh, fairly important players. First of all, this is the hurricane in the 850 millibar vorticity. It's got a symbol over it, so it's hard to see how round it is. But, you know, you've seen me talk about this enough to know. Uh, and, I mean, just looking at it on satellite, it's very well defined. It's almost a Category 5, so what do you expect? So there's that, but then there's this. Uh, and this is the tropical wave that the Hurricane Center has given 10 to 20% chance of developing over the next few days. And this is the relative vorticity here at about the 5,000 foot level. This energy is supposed to move off in this general direction over the next few days. And the European model and the Canadian model uh, basically develop this system. And that erodes the ridge enough over here to tip the scales enough for Matthew to head out. And it would actually be a threat to Bermuda, perhaps. Very, very similar in the split in the tracks a year ago to the day as what we saw with Joaquin. It's not the same setup, but a similar divergence in the tracks between the American generated models. Well, the UK Met is also uh, west for what it's worth, but it's just very eerie and strange that exactly a year ago today we were looking at the same general setup uh, of something either coming towards the U.S. Uh, or heading out to sea. So very interesting. So we need to watch over time to see how much this develops. If it stays shallow in the atmosphere and does not blossom up and start eating away at that ridge of high pressure, the Bermuda High sitting out here, then Matthew has a really good chance of impacting the mid-Atlantic states here uh, and the southeast perhaps. So that being said, let's take a look at the uh, GFS. Again, this is the run that is running right now. And I'm going to go out to five days. So here's Matthew down here. This is the 500 millibar layer. So up another 15,000 feet or so in the atmosphere from the previous map that I was showing you. And what we're going to be looking for, here's the outline of the ridge over here. Uh, pretty good height line extending all the way down to the northern Caribbean. So this, again, is a very thick area of air in the atmosphere. And here's our low pressure area in the upper atmosphere lifting away. <clears throat> and there's Matthew. So let's just play this and watch what happens over time. You see, there's that southwest jog it did right at the beginning. And it comes on up here over time, through the day today, overnight hours, through tomorrow. Luckily on this run, it goes right between Jamaica and Haiti. And that's a good thing, obviously, for direct impacts. And then it gets into the southeast Bahamas. And finally, watch what happens. The ridge just starts to build back in a little bit here at day five. 
Look at that right there towards the end. We're going to run it again here. It kind of knows it's its way up right over here. Watch for that towards the end of the run. Uh, interesting, I haven't seen that yet before, indicating heights in the atmosphere you know, are getting thicker. The ridge building in a little stronger. That's the first time that I've noticed that. And it wasn't just one frame either. Watch, it's getting ready to come in. And look at that. It kind of fingers its way uh, over the top, a little thumb ridge as we call it. Look at that right there, that little appendage. That could be very important because I haven't seen that yet. And this is a major synoptic run of the GFS. It's not an off run like 6Z or 18Z. And so that's interesting. This has the very latest upper air data from all over the United States and any launch of weather balloon soundings in the Caribbean and elsewhere. And so that's interesting. We'll see it one more time. And uh, then I'm going to stop it for a second. And we're going to talk about the impacts here and the close approach to Jamaica. So let me go back to the first frame. Again, watch that little dive to the southwest right there. You see that? That is indicated right there. That really did happen. So the GFS has a real good handle on the first few hours. <laughs> we can definitely verify that. So that's good news. At least we know it's performing as it should. Uh, from there, it comes along wobbling through the Caribbean. And then look, uh, again, this is the sort of the middle of the system here the vorticity signature. Um, it doesn't show you the big rain bands that will definitely be coming into Haiti and then on the western side around uh, eastern Jamaica, etc. This is going to be a very large system. So even though the center on today's run does not pass over Jamaica or Haiti, and this is about 53 hours out, Monday afternoon, the effects of heavy rainfall do not underestimate how lethal that can be. If people are focused on the center and the wind only, and they lose sight of the fact that this is going to dump potentially 20 inches of rain over mountainous areas where people live in the gully areas along streams, creeks, and rivers, that is not good at all. And the rainfall, you've seen it before, it can be horrific. And it cannot be taken lightly. So. Do not look at this and say, oh, the center isn't going to pass. This is, it's kind of like saying, uh, I'm not going to get in a head-on collision with a semi-truck at 100 miles an hour. I, instead, I'm going to be rear-ended by that semi-truck at 80 miles an hour. It's still going to be bad in a different way of, of a bad result. All right? So please take this very seriously down there. Don't focus on the wind and the center of the storm, the hurricane's location. Think of this as something coming along with lots of different hazards or weapons to hit you with, and while the wind may not be there with that kind of a track, the heavy rainfall is, and I'm telling you, with the upslope along those mountain areas, it could be horrible, especially with the fairly slow motion of this system. So please, please keep that in mind. Share this video with people who you want to drive that point home with, and let them understand. I speak from experience seeing it firsthand and then watching events in the past such as Hurricane Mitch over here in 1998. Those deaths, thousands of them, mostly were a result of heavy rainfall. All right, so subscribe please for future videos. The response has been incredible. I appreciate it. Follow on Twitter at Hurricane Track. And of course we do have an app. It's called Hurricane Impact, available in the App Store and on Google Play. So check it out. Uh, everything I do is put into the app. And then on field missions, we actually activate weather stations and post videos from where hurricanes are hitting. Uh, I'm not going to Jamaica. I will be getting some reports from a gentleman down there by the name of Andre, who's going to be sending as much as he can as safely as possible. And I'll publish all of that as much as I can as well. So I appreciate him doing that. And uh, we wish the very best safety and comfort for Andre and his family and the rest of everybody in Jamaica and Haiti and then eventually Cuba. So that's it for today. Uh, well, not today. I'll have something in the evening, put it that way. So I guess for daylight hours, that is it for me for today. I am Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, I will have another video update for you tonight.